Okay. <clears throat> Fuck. Right. <laughs> Go away. Get out of it. Okay, okay, so yesterday was World Mental Health Day. And... I wasn't going to post anything about it, and I wasn't going to... I've not... I've, yeah. I wasn't going to, like, what, mental health at the moment is a very sexy topic and that is so important and something that makes me very happy. I am in total admiration of everyone who has shared their experiences with regards to their mental health and in some sort of attempt to help destigmatize and shed some light on uh, the wide spectrum of uh, mental health issues that currently plagues uh, the society that we live in. I'm getting a bit anxious talking about it just now because it's not something I've actually really spoken about to uh, anybody bar a, a handful of people who are close to me. Uh, and some people that aren't close to me, like actually the... Right, okay, so what actually inspired me to do this was uh, I have a friend, Colin, who suffers from depression and he shared a poem that he wrote today um, in honour of World Mental Health Day which was yesterday. And I just want to read this poem because I think it's, um, I actually think it's quite beautiful and Colin, as far as I know, uh, well, as far as I knew, didn't write poetry, so I just wanted to share this poem uh, before. Uh, fuck it, I'll just share it. <laughs> Spiral by Colin Harvey. Complex companion, how I can loathe thee, why must you bash and bother me? Alone in the dark, deafened by silence, nothing to help ease my pain. Frustrated, aggravated, furious, emasculated, what can I do? Where do I turn? Run. Stumble, fall, smash, scar. Heal. I can. Heal. It actually genuinely moved me to tears because that to me is... A friend that's suffering from depression, and and it's just when it, when it's so close to home, and it's close to home, and oh my God, more people than you would know suffer from some form of depression or another. Uh, and I just wanted to uh, give Colin some recognition for being brave enough to do that. I know that he's going through a tough time at the moment, and I thought that was really big of him, and I thought that was uh, really important. Okay, so now I want to talk about my experience with depression. How? <laughs> okay, how? Okay, okay, so when we think of depression, we often have this image of de like a depressed person. It's somebody who's a social recluse, somebody who can't really function uh, in social situations. And to an extent, that is me. Like, I, I genuinely feel more alone in a group of people than I do when I am actually alone. Like, right now, I'm totally at peace, or as much at peace as I think I can ever be. But we've got this like image society has built of some like a social recluse, somebody who sits in, can't leave the house, somebody who's a wee, actually a bit more agoraphobic and definitely veers off from the societal painted picture of somebody who is socially inducted and in other words, somebody who's popular, somebody who goes out and socialises and has friends, but that is like far from the case. Like depression quite clearly comes in many different forms and in many different levels of severity. Depression comes in gradients and it comes in shades of grey. And it goes without saying that everybody's experience of depression is completely varied and different. So there's no way to quantify other people's depression or anxieties, which is why it's so terrifying because nobody can identify. If, if you can't relate to what that person is going through, if you can't quantify what that person's going through, then you can't really help that person completely. You can definitely, you can definitely try, and that would be appreciated, but you can't actually help that person fully because that person can't even fully help themselves because they don't even fully understand it. I've got a friend who is depressed day in, day out, 24-7. There's no uh, moment of clarity with that. It's just always depression and it's always suicidal thoughts. Whereas I, for example, <sighs> fuck's sake. Right, fuck it. My personal experience with depression, um, 
started around, well, not started, it's probably been a lifelong thing, maybe not, but I would, I would certainly say probably started from I was around 15 years old, and that was when, that was around, that was around the time of a big event in my life, something that like really changed the, the direction in the course of my life and ultimately changed uh, my mental well-being. And it was something that I never, ever, ever acknowledged and never thought to acknowledge. And actually, it's just something that I thought I was. I just, I, I never, like, it, I just thought I was something. I just thought I was somebody who was maybe, I just thought this is who I was and I never thought there was anything wrong with me, okay? So, like, obviously I'm just, like, coasting through life. Oh. I'm just trying to get comfortable. I'm sitting on the floor. I don't know why that happened. It's just because the tripod was sitting here and I just thought I would get come down here. But... Okay, so this event in my life happened when I was 15, and it's like, don't think about it too much, it's not like crazy, crazy, crazy bad, it's fine now. But it happened, and it was horrible, I remember acknowledging that, that it was horrible, but I remember sort of quickly moving on with my life and, and seemingly not really letting it uh, weigh me down. And... Retrospectively, looking at it now, I maybe didn't really take the time to acknowledge that event. Actually, I didn't take the time to feel sorry for myself, and this is the one thing I've learned. Feeling sorry for yourself is absolutely important. <laughs> like, and I mean it in the sense that something bad happens to you, it is so okay to sit. Uh, what I mean by that is that if something bad happens to you, it is more than okay to take some time out to feel sorry for yourself. Because if something bad happens to you, then that is bad, and you should feel sorry for yourself. You should take that time to yourself and absorb what's happened, try and process it, feel sorry for yourself temporarily, don't let it weigh you down for the rest of your life, but in that moment, take that moment and just let it seep into you and just fully analyse what's just happened and fully analyse what your direction is going to be after that. I have never, I have never done that. Bad things have happened to me and it's only now, retrospectively looking back, that I was like, I didn't really like behave the way maybe a normal person would behave to that event. Like maybe like I felt like I maybe showed like a lack of empathy or like not like that because I feel like I'm a very empathetic person and I'm a very sympathetic person and I feel like I'm quite compassionate. I don't know. I don't think I'm detached. I don't think I'm a sociopath in any way. But I, but I did kind of just like sweep things under the carpet and go whatever. Like that's life and actually that's not life. That shouldn't be life and you shouldn't just. You should be able to acknowledge and be aware of the fact that what happened was perhaps a bit unfair. You can always do this thing where you say, somebody's always got it worse, but you are your only you. So like, you are your only you and your only universe. Like, you are everything to you. You are the most important thing. And if you can't sit here, like, there's just no reality where, for example, if somebody comes up to you and stabs you nine times, right, that you should just be like, oh, well, shit happens. You should really... <laughs> I'm spitting. You should really be able to internalise that and go, this was horrible what happened to me and then process it and deal with it. And the problem that I found, and this is where my depression really came to a, like an absolute but I'm on an absolute tangent here, but like to go to this like to sort of try and illustrate my experience with depression, I think it I think it was kick started at that point. Well I would say my depression or my prone to um mental illness in any variety was when the kick started when I was 15 but it really didn't start to rear its head and actually become volcanic in nature until I was around 23 and the day that I identified that I had something wrong with me was I remember phoning my dad and my dad's like my best friend and I remember phoning my dad I was I was feeling pretty shit and there was there was no getting around that anybody who knew me knew I was feeling pretty shit but I don't think anybody, including myself, really realised the full extent of that. Um, so I phoned my dad, and my dad is my best friend, and around that time particularly, I was feeling pretty low. Not to the detriment of my own health, or, or at least so I didn't think, but certainly to the point where somebody can go, oh, Liam's maybe not his usual uh, chirpy, uh, sociable self. Like, I locked myself in the flat, I became a social recluse. I had no social life. I dedicated every single minute of my time to either work or bed. I, like, some days I couldn't get up. Some days I couldn't leave the studio because I had to do work. I just, I became obsessive to the point where I, I like, 
I'm lucky that I still have friends, basically. <coughs> but this day, but this day when I phoned my dad, I phoned my dad and I was like, Dad, where are you? He's like, Oh, I'm not in the new son because my dad lives right next to me. Okay, so like, I, like, I see my dad a lot, and I had just moved into a flat just up the street from him, and I phoned him and I was like, Dad, where are you? Kind of thing, blah blah. blah. I just wanted to kind of hang out. Uh, he was like, Oh, I'm not in son. Kind of blah blah blah. And I'm like, Right, fair enough. But I remember, <laughs> I remember my thoughts in my head when he said that he wasn't around. I remember feeling like, you fucking cunt, and like, he's not a cunt, he's just out doing his shopping or whatever, but I'm like, and for some reason I just feel like I need my dad. Bear in mind, I was 23 at this point, I'm an adult, and this isn't really behaviour that I've demonstrated in the past, like, I had never really craved that paternal figure so much, but at that moment I just needed my dad, and he wasn't there. He was 15 minutes away, he said, I'll be back at home, he's like, I'll be back home in 15 minutes if you just want to wait, and I was like, cool. So I sat outside on a bench outside my dad's flat, waiting for him to come back, and when he arrived at the bench, I just burst into tears. I mean, like, erupted in tears. I was inconsolable, and my dad was like, like, basically my dad knows me more than I know myself, and he said that, and what he said was, he's like, I, like, I saw this coming, basically, he's like, I just, is that there's been something wrong with you, blah blah blah. Didn't want to mention that you might be depressed, blah blah blah. So there was that, and then that set me on a course of trying to identify what was wrong with me. Uh, set me on a course of um, looking at medications, stuff like that. Ultimately, I decided medication wasn't for me. I didn't feel like this feeling. I didn't really feel like I actually wanted to get rid of that feeling. I felt like to deny these horrible. I felt like. I felt like to deny or to diminish these feelings of emotional vulnerability was to potentially deny ever feeling happy again. And what I mean by that is for you to get up from down here, so for you to be down here and come up to like mid-level, it also means that you're never really going to go up. So you're just going to be at this constant mid-level. And I didn't really... And that was that was and that was something that just did not appeal to me uh, at all. So I decided I'm out of breath talking about it because I'm just I'm getting so I'm getting so like agitated because I'm trying to articulate myself and I'm really really struggling to think of the words. But yeah, but so anyway, I decided medication wasn't for me. Flush the meds, you know what I mean? Like not for me. I, I want to do this on my own. I think for me, my level of depression isn't severe enough. And it is life threatening, and it's not severe enough. It's not, so I was like, flush the meds, I don't need them, I can probably deal with this myself in some way or another uh, without the aid of uh, a prescription or a chemical alteration. I felt like that was the right decision and I feel like it's something that I'm um, benefiting from now as opposed to uh, be, now being reliant on uh, a, a pill perhaps that yeah, alters the chemicals and electricity in my head to make me feel like I feel good as opposed to actually feeling good and don't get me wrong I really think there's a huge value for a lot of people in taking antidepressants I really do I, I, know, I, know, I know lots of people who wouldn't be here to this day if it wasn't for antidepressants and my heart goes out to them and I have so much respect for them because for me I don't think I'm that strong I think if I was if I was feeling like that, I don't feel like I would be here to even feel that anymore. Again, I don't really know the point of this. I guess it was just to get this off my chest, uh, show people maybe what my experience was. I, I'm not going to go into great detail like on things that may have caused it because that's uh, my private life. Something that I'm not really something that I don't really think needs to be discussed. I don't think you need to. I don't really think you need to know the ins and outs to like try and. Um, situationalize it I think it's just it is what it is and this is the point it doesn't matter like nothing bad to me could have ever happened and I could still be feeling this way that's the thing it's pretty much an unquantifiable illness it's like a broken phantom leg it really is like you can't do fuck all to help it for some people they could have the best life ever at least at least in our at least in our eyes but they could be two steps away from throwing themselves off a bridge. And that's just something that we always need to remember. And like I said, it is a sexy topic and, and, and it is and that's amazing and that's great. And some people say that it's a sexy topic in the sense that a lot of people use it for attention or whatever and post about it, blah, blah, blah. Totally like belittling people who actually have depression. But 
I, I can't really agree with that. I think anybody who could pretend to have something so uh, crippling, anybody who craves attention that much, has to one degree or the other something wrong mentally. And I mean that with as much respect as possible. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, how much money you have, what social circles you travel in, we are all susceptible to mental health problems and that is just a fact, whether it be small ones or big ones, it doesn't matter. We're all extremely vulnerable. It's all chemicals and electricity and it's so fragile. So just take care of yourself. The most important thing for me was identifying that I had a problem, a small one comparatively to other people, but a problem for me nonetheless. And that is what really set me on the road to like some sort of recovery. I don't feel like I'm fully over it. I don't really feel like it's actually something that I'll fully get over, but I'm at peace with it and I've identified what it is and I can point to it and go, oh, that's why I was such a dick. Oh, that's, oh, that's why I feel like that. The one thing that people should maybe take away from this is what I've learned the hard way is take time to feel sorry for yourself. Take, honestly, if something bad happens to you, just take the time to just take the time to absorb it and analyse it and work out and work out what sort of trajectory you're going to go on after that. If you just keep sweeping it under the rug, I swear to God, it's going to come to a boiling point one day. Uh, and in my case, that was when my dad was out shopping and uh, I thought he was a cunt for not being there for me. <laughs> and I burst out crying when he arrived. So don't let it get to that. <laughs> it could be worse, but I mean, like you'd rather, you'd rather um, combat the problem before it comes to that. So... Anyway, thanks for listening, guys. Um, I don't know how much value this is to people, but I hope it um, encourages some people to maybe analyse their situation and analyse how they're feeling and maybe realise that they don't have to feel like that. Thank you. Bye-bye.